Well, Vulcan Security Systems is pleased to bring you another webinar offering you guidance and a framework on how to define the scope of your business security system needs. We're going to be focused on premises and video surveillance systems for manufacturing and distribution centers. The industry focus of this particular webinar is targeted at machining, metalworking, fabricating shops, tier one, two, and three automotive suppliers, other assembly line operations, commercial warehouses, distribution centers, mining and processing, oil and gas storage, tank centers, distribution facilities, operations of that nature. Vulcan Security Systems is based in Birmingham, Alabama and serves the entire state of Alabama with a focus on central and north Alabama commercial operations. The first step in defining the scope of your premises security system is to understand your objectives and know what it is that you want the security system to do or to deliver for your business. Are you focused on reducing insurance claims, liability for personal injury, whether it's workers' compensation or liability to third parties who may be visiting your premises? You may be wanting to reduce incidents of theft. You may be wanting to minimize the chance of vandalism. You may also be monitoring for workplace efficiencies, looking at inventory control systems and tracking the inventory through the operations, through your manufacturing process. Perhaps you want to monitor your premises remotely after hours or even during business hours. It's possible that one of the focuses or objectives is to get faster emergency response time. That's typically a common need in any type of security system. You may also be concerned about incidents of workplace violence or even terrorism, which is a sad reality in today's business world. Your objectives may include all of these, some of these, only one of these, most of them, but it's important to define that so that when you start to talk to vendors, you will be able to explain what it is you want to accomplish and they can help you identify the best technology to serve those objectives. You also need to define the available budget. Obviously, you're not going to know the cost of a system until you have finished scoping it out and defining the objectives and figuring out what the technology will be. But you need a starting point in terms of your finances to guide the vendor in helping you select the technology that will serve your objectives within your available budget. One of the things we often discover with our clients is that the security technology they implement actually pays for itself very quickly through reductions in claims, through reductions of loss, through better customer service, many different avenues. We have some case studies over on the website where we talk about, in one case, a distribution center that implemented video surveillance. There was an incident where there was a missing shipment and they were able to go back and look at the footage, identify the problem, they were able to solve the problem quickly before any damage to the customer relationship was done and identified a problem worker and took care of that situation as well. Just to give you a very broad idea of the cost of a video surveillance system, if you're looking at a small business who needs a four camera security system with a very entry level HD cameras networked over coaxial cable, you're going to be looking at a cost of around $2,200, $2,500. This is just a very broad idea. If you're looking at something uh, more in the range of eight high definition cameras connected over an IP network system, you're looking at something more in the range of $8,000. So that should give you a very broad framework for where to start your budgeting process. What many companies don't realize is that a surveillance system or any type of premises security system is going to involve many departments, whether it's facilities management and operations, your information technology team, your safety and HR personnel, all of those need to be involved in the planning stages so that you can make sure that, first of all, you're serving their objectives, that the technology that you're implementing is going to facilitate their particular responsibilities to your company, and you also want to make sure that you're not deploying something that will actually impede operations in some way. So create a team. Once you know your objectives, you have a general budget outline, and you have a team in place to help vet vendors and technology needs, you're going to want to conduct a physical audit. And this is a good time to actually bring in a vendor like Vulcan Security Systems because we can help you prioritize and choose the right type of technology for your needs. The physical audit is going to consist of both an exterior walk and a building walk. So we're going to talk about those next. 
for your exterior audit, you're going to want to take a look at all points of ingress and egress. You're going to need to know where, where those are on your premises. What are the hours of operation? Uh, do you have after hours deliveries? Is there a need for someone to be on site after regular business hours? If so, you're going to need to take that into consideration. Are there outside storage buildings? Are there after hours vehicle parking, such as you may have a parking lot where you have trucks waiting or trailers loaded ready for pickup in the morning? Those may need to be secured in ways separate from uh, a vacant parking lot. You need to take a look at the terrain and landscaping. Uh, depending on those factors, you may need more or fewer cameras or some kind of fencing. Exterior lighting is always important and you want to know the location of all utilities infrastructure. Your internal facilities audit will again be tied to your objectives. If you have access areas that are open to the public and open to different segments of employees, such as a lab context, you may want to have access control systems internally at various doors. It may be sufficient to have one single access control system separating the customer's areas from any other workplace areas. Once you have completed your audit, then it's time to begin defining the actual security technology needs, tying those back to your objectives and your budget. Really four categories, depending on the type of business you have. These may include access control technologies, which limits the ability to enter parts of your premises. You may have intrusion detection systems, which could range from traditional burglar alarms to motion activated lighting to sensors that look for flooding or heat or other variables that might be relevant to your particular work environment. We're going to focus a little bit more in this presentation on video security cameras in just a moment, but you can consider the old fashioned analog technology or digital. We highly recommend moving into the direction of digital. If you have old analog cameras, those might be incorporated into a retrofit and upgrade of your system. Otherwise, we typically recommend that clients go with digital cameras. Another consideration in terms of technology needs are whether you will go with a coaxial or an IP networked camera system, whether it will be over Ethernet or Wi-Fi, whether there will be HD or Ultra HD cameras. The fourth category of technology to consider would be the inventory control systems. These may range from your video surveillance to an RFID tracking system. Digital cameras is really where you want to start when you're going to implement any type of video surveillance system for your business. Megapixel cameras, uh, they offer much higher resolution and a lot of functionality that you would not otherwise have available with the old analog cameras. Something you really want to consider is whether you're going to use an open interface system or if the vendor that you're working with requires that you use their proprietary technology. We have a very com uh, complete blog post on this, the pros and cons, but suffice it to say, in general, proprietary technology systems can limit your ability to upgrade later. You may be locked into a particular system. You may have limited service options in your particular geographic area. So we recommend open interface technology whenever possible. For most of the context, uh, for the folks who would be interested in this particular webinar, you're going to be using a network of cameras. It's rare unless it's a remote location such as an oil and gas pipeline where you would have standalone cameras. The cameras that you do select should be appropriate for the operating condition, whether they're indoor or outdoor. If they're indoor in a heavy manufacturing environment, you're going to need heavier duty cameras, quite obviously. So that needs to be taken into consideration. Then, of course, the lighting demands under the context where the cameras will be deployed. Cameras are available for low light situations. These are often infrared. Sometimes people choose to have lighting upgrades in the exterior in certain areas of the building. Those are just considerations that you have to take into account as you're defining the scope of your project. Vulcan security systems can work with almost any camera technology system. However, we typically recommend and start with Mobotics video solutions, but we do work with whatever the uh, customer needs and preferences are, and we work with uh, retrofitting existing systems in many contexts. We want to take just a moment and give you a, sort of a big picture look at the different camera options that are available for video surveillance. The most common, commonly viewed at least, that you see whenever you see cameras in operation are going to be either a fixed camera or some type of dome camera. Starting with fixed cameras, these are obviously pointing in one direction. They often will require physical adjustments in order to change the point of view of the camera. 
They are quite visible, often used as a deterrent effect uh, for that reason. And the higher end digital uh, may be equipped with pan, tilt, and zoom features that can be activated remotely, but it really depends on the camera for those uh, options. The pan, tilt, and zoom and dome cameras do allow for remote adjustments as needed based on evolving circumstances. So if you do get a security alert, the camera can be uh, aimed in certain locations. It, the dome cameras in particular are much less conspicuous. It's often hard to detect the point of view of the camera and they're often disguised in lighting fixtures and other more secure environments. In this era, there are many sensor equipped cameras. We're not going to focus on those in this presentation, but just know that those are available for industrial applications when necessary. It's important to take into account your IT network considerations. Uh, if the cameras are going to be networked over a coaxial or an IP network, that's going to factor into the cost. If you are an IP network, you need to consider whether Ethernet or fiber optics are available and whether there will be a need for any type of retrofit or upgrade of your old IT system technology. Again, Vulcan Security Systems is based in Birmingham, Alabama, locally owned and serves a geographic area extending from Montgomery North to the state line, but we can cover the entire state as necessary. We offer free needs assessments to Alabama manufacturers and commercial operations. So give us a call today, 205-290-9404, or visit the website at vulcansecuritysystems.com.